Good morning once again from Cashers, North Carolina. Happy Wednesday and I hope you're doing well. I give you a moment to center yourselves and we'll begin our prayers on this beautiful day. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to seek him in his temple. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield, overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me, Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield. Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created, yet more wonderfully restored, the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We continue reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 4. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For what the, for the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle comes from this book of Celtic prayer. Land of my fathers, how I long to return, to touch thy earth and find again thy sacred paths, well walked with the gospel of peace, veiled now in the shadow of mediocrity. What mean these stones which beset the coastline, who in twisted agony cry out in praise and supplication of him and the renewal of the faith? that bled to secure them there. 
Yet we would walk again thy sacred paths, repair thy ancient ruins, restore thy broken altars, raise up the foundations of many generations. Hear this, you lands of the south, who hold many in captivity by your empty words, well-worn myths, who neglected to see justice for poor, the widow, and the fatherless. Look to the north, for lo, your Redeemer comes, clothed in the poverty of a few who dare to speak his name, without vanity, in a whisper, lest the earth should tremble, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Poor of Yahweh, arise, take up the ancient mantle, which has awaited your day. Clothe yourselves within its humility, for you have been set as a stumbling block for many. We continue reading from Matthew. Again, another story about the first being last and the last being first. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around and said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, They thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the same usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of all the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, as we focus on this cross, we remember before you all those things which we would like to pray. Starting at the top of the cross, we remember and give thanks for all the blessings of this life. We open our hearts in gratitude for your generosity, for the faith that you have given to us, faith that has come through a variety of churches and a variety of preachers, a variety of teachers, opportunities we've had to serve you and to know you, to see you in the face of others, to be served by you, to be healed by you. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the music that has sustained and grown our faith. We give you thanks for the beauty of this world all of its intricacy, and all of its simplicity. For air and water, ocean and river, for food, for birds and animals, for oceans, for clouds, for rain, for sun, all these things, Lord, we give you thanks. 
for our friends, for our family, for those who love us and those who we're able to love, for our parents, for our children. We give you thanks. We give you thanks for the Holy Scriptures, which we get to read and understand you more in our relationship to you and your call to us, for us to save us, to rebuild from the rocky paths those things that are true to you and therefore true to us. At the foot of the cross, Lord, we kneel before you. We kneel in our hearts and we confess our sins, those known and unknown, things done and left undone. And we ask you to uphold us by your Spirit. We ask once again for your restoration and forgiveness for the consolation of your grace and for true amendment of life. At the center of the cross, we remember how you, Lord, offered yourself for us. And this is the time we make our offerings of self unto you. May we do so with passion. May we do so with love and faith. May we do so with sacrifice. May we offer ourselves as a neighbor and as a friend, as someone who can console and assist. May we offer ourselves in and through our churches, in and through our communities, offering ourselves, giving up ourselves to your service for those in our household, spouses, children, parents, On the left arm of the cross, we pray for others. For those who are alone, for those who are dying, for those suffering under the hardships of war, and those seeking to serve and save them. We pray for those who face injustice and those who serve justice. We pray as your Son taught for our enemies, that we and they may turn our hearts, taking steps closer to understand and to work for the common good. We pray for those who are hungry or poor or unemployed, and those who employ others. We pray for those who are well fed, that they may be aroused even more to share what they have. We pray for the leaders of this land, of the world, and leaders in our communities, those elected and those appointed. We pray for the leaders in our churches, our clergy, our bishops, our vestries, our wardens. We give you thanks for staff of the Good Shepherd and pray for them in their ministry this day. And last of Lord, we pray for ourselves, our souls and our bodies, for ears to listen, for hearts to have faith, for hands to serve, for all the unquietness in our heart breathe on us, a breath of God, breathe us and make us whole. May we, by the outward and visible signs of baptism and of Holy Communion, know your grace. And also find that grace in so many other places as you would bestow it upon us. Help us as we go through this day to remember we are ever walking in your sight and in your grace. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all forevermore. Amen. Great to be with you on this beautiful Wednesday. Go in peace, be well, be faithful, and I'll see you next time.